This is Steve Fox with Washington Blade. Foxy. And, that's right. <laughs> Steve Foxy. <laughs> yeah. All my friends call me Foxy, actually. Oh, do they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought I was original. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the privilege of uh, being here tonight with Tracy Young before she spins at Cobalt mm -hmm. uh, in just a few hours. Yeah. And uh, so thank you for joining us. No, really appreciate thank it. You. And uh, we're sitting here uh, right uh, by a disco ball that I actually found <laughs> on Craigslist just <laughs> last week. <laughs> We talked about that, and I'm on a mission. Me and my best friend in New York, Doreen, um, we're on a mission to steal disco balls. And I look no further. I can throw this over the balcony and put it right in my car, and I'm good. I will tell you, this is, this is very hard to put <laughs> into a car. This would look great in my... No, honey. The disco ball, you make it work somehow. All right, well, I know i got to chain that it. down. If it's I missing tomorrow it. morning, I know who took it. No, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, uh, it will be, be missing. You recently uh, remixed uh, Britney's new single, Hold It Against Me. <laughs> yeah, mm. I love it. Like, I think the song is a, like, home run hit, smash out of the park, like Lady Gaga, Britney's back. Like, I'm so excited to be a part of it. I really, I, I love the song. So it, when you love, I, I just, I'm so happy with the way it turned out. And I'm in such a musical head these days that um, I, I think it's going to do really well. I did like five versions, like so I could play a different version every clip. <laughs> like, can you tell I'm single, <laughs> bored? Like, do this work? <laughs> you spawned at Madonna's wedding, which I think is the ultimate gig. How did, how did that? Did it feel like that for you? I, yeah, yes. I'm not going to say that, but I'm such a thinker and a deep. I look at things in such a different way. It, it was her wedding, and that's the most important day to a lot of people. Yeah. So, you know, I don't do a lot of weddings, but if I was hired to, I would want to make that day special. That's like one of the most memorable days of your life. So not taking away from Madonna, because yes, out of everybody in the world, she chose me. Yeah. Like, wow. I, I mean, but... She's just somebody that fell in love and got married at the end of the day. Like, yeah. that's what we all want. That's what yeah. we're fighting for. Yeah. And, um, but it was a complete honor. It was definitely the most, definitely one, if not the biggest highlight of my career. Yeah. Definitely. But I always like to dissect things and yeah. just throw different ideas out there. I mean, everybody's wedding is important. Yeah, yeah. And Madonna's has the same, and this is my opinion, she certainly hasn't told me this, but she, I'm sure, has the same desires as we all do. Absolutely. Spend our lives with somebody. Yeah. That's it. Did you ever think that this wasn't necessarily a good match, per se, or um, her and Guy, or? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. In 2003, um, Madonna symbolically passed a torch to Britney Spears with a kiss at the MTV oh, I'm VMAs. I'm so jealous. <laughs> God. <laughs> the subsequent years um, were obviously tough for Britney with some, um, with some claiming that she had actually dropped that baton that was passed to her. And, mm. and, and she obviously had encountered a, a, a real rough time in her life. Don't um, we all? And, and would you say that over the past three years, she has able, been able to reclaim that baton or has Lady Gaga come in and just kind of well, taken it away? I don't think it's fair to compare an artist with another artist um, because at the end of the day, yeah, they're all competing for that number one slot, but they're all so different. Artists are different. We're all different. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy. I, I'm, I love a good comeback from anybody because, like I said, it takes me back to that place where people love to kick you when you're down. And I've been kicked when I'm down. And when I'm in that position, when I'm down and I'm being kicked, I'm just like, watch, I'm going to show you. Do you feel like your most recent kick was your experience with the Real Housewives of Atlanta? Um, yeah, that could be considered a kick in the media. Mm -hmm. But privately, it wasn't always kicks. It was hard. Um, I don't agree with Kim's perception of what went on, but if that's where her delusion is, so be it. Um, 
But I understand where it comes from. I'm not mad at her. Um, I just happen to be in a very different place in my life. And I don't regret anything I've ever done. I don't regret being with Kim. And she is a lot of fun. She makes me laugh. And we, in a lot of behind the scenes ways, not public ways, had a very similar sense of humor. We laughed a lot. It was very light and breezy. No drama, believe it or not. And, and it ended ugly. Do you feel that there was love there when it was good? I loved her. Yeah. I don't know how she feels, but I have a, I have a love for her. And, and if you love somebody, just accept it. You're always going to love them. Yeah. But you're maybe not supposed to be with them. I, she, came into my uh, she came into my life at a time when I really needed somebody like that. Yeah. And I don't think that was a mistake yeah. because it was just fun. Yeah. Now, one thing that in my experience, in my observation of uh, reality television, is that a lot of the, you know, the quote-unquote stars that are part of these programs tend to dramatize <laughs> their life. Um, uh, to excess. I hate that. Do, do you feel like you were pulled into that? Uh, you um, were almost, not, I'm not going to say used, but you, you, were, you were pulled into <laughs> that to... A lot of people say that. A lot of people say, Tracy, she used you. I mean, at the end of the day, it's two people. I don't want to think that. Um, because that's not a good feeling. And I don't want to think that about her. Mm. But there are parts of me that quite honestly, do feel that way. Yeah. Um, and um, there are parts of me that don't. But maybe I used her too. Because I was depressed. She made me laugh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It takes two people. Yeah. In the past year, bullying has become a crisis <laughs> in, in this country, unfortunately. Well, that's been going on for lifetimes. If a child cannot go to their parent and say, such and such just called me a faggot at school and it hurt my feelings. What do I do? It's that simple. Yeah. So how do you make a child trust a parent? Yeah. That Ultimately, it's that relationship, whether it's your parent or a friend, or you have to have somebody you can talk to. And I, clearly something's going on for all this to be going on. And it's a, it's a trust thing to me. Like, who are, how come you don't trust as a child to say this before you die? Yeah. That's, why does it get that bad that you trust no one around you to talk about this and take your own life? Well, thank you for taking the time to be with us Sorry to get so no, no. What's done is done. Let's change it. We have to. Yeah.